Episode seven in the year I got skinny, you guys, this is the key pivotal moment. This is such a giant fork in the road. I can't, I, it just, it blows my mind. And so, you know, so I was 280 pounds, right? That was my high weight just a few months before this moment in the story. It was my high weight. I lost, ended up losing 140 pounds in all. I got to my lowest adult weight. My story went viral. People started following me. We now have over 200 people who've lost at least 100 pounds. I mean, we've had wild success. And in, for me, in my life, personally, I've just had more success than I've just ever had. How is that? How is that? And this series is all about the unexpected little encounters and little forks in the road. This one is a, a massive fork in the road. And so I was in getting approved for bariatric surgery, as I said in the previous episodes, surgery I would never have. So let's not get all confused about that. Never had it, but it's a key part of the story because I'd really put like all my hopes and dreams into having that surgery so that I could get out and hike with my sons. That was my big goal, get out and hike. That's what I wanted to do. My tool to do that was going to be bariatric surgery. And I went through the process. I was, you know, getting approved, but I wouldn't be able to have the surgery in the time window that I intended. I intended to have it certainly by July, mid-July, but but probably in June sometime because we had a big, big family vacation planned for August, early August, and we were not going to change that. And it just, the schedules didn't align, as I mentioned in the last episode. And someone, it was some years later, it was actually the editors at Woman's World, you know, I was on the cover of a magazine, for goodness sakes, and they said, why didn't you just change your family vacation and just have the surgery? And I thought, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Because we're even last minute traveler types. We never make, make these trips all this time in advance. Well, the reason is it was to view a total solar eclipse. My oldest son in particular was really into astronomy. And for 10 years, we, you know, it had been on our radar that there would be this amazing opportunity to view a total solar eclipse. And so for a year in advance, we had reservations and we knew we would be traveling to Wyoming to view the eclipse. And you can't change the date of a solar eclipse. You can't. Okay. So with, there was that constraint. And, and also, I, I mean, I had valued the idea so much I wasn't going to be, you know, the fuddy-duddy mom who put herself first and then didn't do that thing. Like, no, we're out on these adventures. We're continuing our adventures. That's not changing. And we've made this plan for 10 years. We are doing this thing. And so I did make that a priority, which is kind of amazing. And I was not able to get that surgery in time. It, that dynamic, I'm kind of amazed at my maturity in this. Because what I did is, as I was out gallivanting, you know, hitting those trails and that spirit of adventure, I was reflecting deeply on how am I going to deal with my emotions and my, you know, the loss I was feeling over not being able to have this surgery. Because that, that was my key to getting out and living my life. I was ready for it, you know, ready. How am I going to deal with this? And as I thought about it, I thought, you know, this is, it gives you a little more time. And what I know as, I, as I've gotten older and I look back on just big decisions that I've made in my life, I increasingly do this thing that I call regret management. And that is because, you know, you, especially if you're older, you know, you look back on things with regret like, oh, wait, I didn't even know that was a fork in the road and I made this decision. Had I seen this, maybe I would have gone a different way. And you start to regret like, well, why didn't I see this? Or why didn't I appreciate this choice or that choice? Maybe if I'd behaved a little bit differently, my life would be different today. You know, you look back and you say that. And so what I try to do, if I can recognize that there's a major fork in the road, I try to at least manage my decision um, to reduce my future regret, okay? So recognizing I don't have all the information in the decisions or whatever else, I try to be mindful that this is a very big fork in the road. And so in the case of bariatric surgery, uh, what I decided to do was, I knew I was gonna have it in January and I knew having the surgery that just from my personality that later in life, throughout the years after the surgery, I would look back on it and wonder if it was my best decision. I mean, you know, as well as it might have gone, I still might wonder, like, what if I had some nutrient deficiencies or something that might have been related to it? What if it didn't really work out? What if I still fat? You know, would I look back and say, man, I shouldn't have gotten my stomach shrink down to 10% of its previous size? I didn't know. 
And I thought, okay, manage that future regret. You don't know what your regret's going to be. Why don't you manage it right now and do it this way? Use the time. So go to the eclipse. Enjoy the eclipse. Enjoy the trip with your family. And when you come back, your job in September, October, November, December is to prove to yourself that you've done everything you can do to lose weight. So that when you go into that surgery room, you will have the surgery and you know that it was your last choice because you had done everything you could do. And so regardless of the outcome of the surgery, you know that it was your last choice. You will not regret it in the future because you know that was it. You needed to do it. You know, it might not work out, but at least you made your best decision. And you do that by proving to yourself that it really was your very last option. So that is what I charge myself with. And so in those weeks before the eclipse, I was really kind of pacing and pondering what I would do when I got back and really reflecting on the different things I'd done in my life that had driven my weight loss and how I could kind of piece them together, you know, and what I would do weaving those things together and trying something, you know, for the last time before I went into that surgery room and I would have four months to do it. And so in the weeks leading up to the eclipse, I was really deeply reflective about those questions. What would I do specifically? And I had the beginnings of an idea about what I would do, but I didn't implement it. I didn't implement it in July or in August because I was really just focused on that reflection. And I knew I was about to go view this eclipse, have this trip and view the eclipse and come back and do something. The something that I would do was with the spirit of proving to myself that I had done everything I could do to lose weight. You guys, something powerful happens when that is your mindset. <laughs> we'll talk more. We'll talk more. But because this total solar eclipse in 2024 is about up upon us. Maybe, maybe you'll hear this after, but maybe before. And I spent that time beforehand really pondering what I needed to do. And I viewed that eclipse in the spirit, like I was feeling the moment of that shift, you know, <laughs> and traditional people saw an eclipse as like a shift from one stage to another, a fork in the road. What a fork in the road it was for me and what focus I had on like that change I was about to make. I stood there under that eclipse sky, focused on mentally, on what I was about to do when I went home. And that was the key game-changing element for me. The eclipse causing me to pause, okay? Not get the surgery, reflect, and then prove this thing to myself. What happens when your main mission is to get inside, fight your own demons and your own second guessing and prove to yourself you've done everything you could do to lose weight. This is what happens.